Hi, I'm Carl Tannenbaum, Chief Economist for Northern Trust. At the end of January, there was a small, solemn ceremony in Brussels to mark the departure of the United Kingdom from the European Union. The Union Jack was lowered from its staff at EU headquarters and some tears were shed. The aftermath of Brexit hasn't exactly been a trail of tears, but it has certainly not been anything to smile about. At the outset, trade between the United Kingdom and the EU was snarled by heightened documentation requirements and additional inspections. Store shelves in Northern Ireland emptied early in the year as grocers struggled with alterations in supply lines. Waters where fishing rights had been carefully apportioned became the scene of a short blockade by French boats. Cargo landings at British ports slumped. As the months went by, many of these initial frictions eased. But longer-term consequences emerged. Uncertainty around employment rules prompted an exodus of British workers from the rest of the EU prior to Brexit Day across a wide range of occupations. The loss of talent and the shrinkage of the labor force will be a hindrance to economic growth in the United Kingdom. There was also an exodus of financial transactions from London to other world financial centers. Brexit terms were vague on the ability of British financial companies to serve clients in the EU and vice versa. Providers began shifting the geography of their operations to avoid interruption. Studies have also shown that British service firms have lost substantial amounts of business with the EU because of Brexit. While a member of the European Union, the UK was covered by trade agreements negotiated by the collective. Now on its own, Britain is faced with the challenge of negotiating a broad range of new trade deals. It has reached some agreements, but others, including an updated arrangement with the United States, are unfinished. The free trade agreement that the UK and the EU agreed with one another late last year is not off to an auspicious start. The protocol for handling transactions between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland has broken down, with each side blaming the other for its failure. And factions within the United Kingdom that preferred to remain within the EU are expressing their discontent. Elections in Scotland earlier this year may set the stage for another referendum on independence, which would further weaken the UK economy and its standing in the world. Brexit proponents note that it's still early days and promise that dividends will be forthcoming once order is restored. But for now, separation anxiety is the order of the day. And that's The View from here.